In our Old Testament lesson for today, it's a story that we all know. It's a factual event that we all know. The Tower of, of Babel, or Babel, whichever one, which I guess that's kind of ironic right there. If you, you don't know how to pronounce the word Babel or Babel. But in that text we, we, that we know so well, I don't think we know the words. We know the story. We know the context. I think we, know, we have a lot of scripture like that that's in our head. We know the context. We know, we know that Jesus turned water into wine, for example, but can you tell me where? Can you tell me what the circumstances were? Jesus walked on water. How many times did he walk on water? Why did he walk on water? Now, we know that we understand the context and we're taught uh, vague Bible stories in Sunday school. But what about the actual words? In fact, I spoke with some members in our congregation just about Sunday school and about how, uh, how precise we are able to do and be at Augustana about teaching the Bible to our little ones and to our uh, catechumens and recently confirmed and also those my age, older, etc. Actually, the words of Scripture matters. And so when we look at the text here and we understand the context and we see, we know the story, well, they wanted to build a tower up to heaven. And so they made their own bricks and they made their own mortar and they built this tower all the way up to heaven. But that's not, well, I tried to make it all the way up to heaven, but that's not what the text actually says. The text actually says the whole earth had one language and the same words. And as people migrated from the east, they found a plain in the land of Shinar and settled there. And they said to one another, and this is the important part, Come, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And so they made the bricks. Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city, a tower, with its tops in the heavens. And let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be dispersed over the face of the whole earth. So they weren't trying to build a heaven up to God the way that we think of in that story. They were trying to build a city using their own language to build a city to glorify themselves. The bricks and the mortar are simply uh, representations, of, well, real life representations, physical actions of a black heart. The desire to want to build up a monument, a city, devoted to themselves. And they all had the language and the words to do it. And so I ask today, at Augustana, are we doing the same thing? Are we using our own tongues and our own languages to build up our own city? I'm not going to pretend that recent events and things that have happened have not been hard on us and have not hit us hard. And I know that with changes comes people who don't appreciate the change and the like. But again, I say this in person and from the pulpit. If you do not like it, come talk to me. Come to me. Do not whisper behind the backs. Do not use your language to build up a city for yourselves. Gossip not, slander not. Even if it is the truth, using the truth as a sword is a sin. Yes, you can slander the truth. I have heard mumblings and groanings behind my back 
I have heard one language being spoken because they desire to build a city around themselves and to build a tower into heaven. We can do better than this. We are better than this. Christ has said so. So how do you want to use your language to build each other up or to build walls to keep each other out? Because I can tell you how building a city to praise yourselves will work out. It will be destroyed and you will be scattered away from Augustana. You will be scattered away from the Holy Christian Church. You will be scattered away. So repent. Hold your tongues. If there is something that you do not like that is happening, weigh it against Scripture and talk plainly. You have elected elders. You have elected leaders. Talk. Let us be one again. On this day, and I chose this day for this sermon because it is Pentecost, the day in which the Lord created His church, that I remind you that you are the church. Act like it. See, when everyone could speak one language, they used that one language to build a shrine to themselves. But when the Holy Spirit spoke, he, he spoke in every language for every person to hear. And they heard the gospel and they were amazed, repented, and received faith. But let us understand that even though you can understand me, and we're speaking the same language. The words that are coming from my mouth are not the words of Gavin, but are the words of Christ. Christ says in our, in our gospel text that He is not going to be with them much longer. He would soon ascend. He also says this, that the prince of this world is coming, or at least is at hand. And now I have told you before it takes place, so that when it does take place, you may believe. I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming, but he has no claim on me. But I do as the Father has commanded me, so that the world may know that I love the Father. Rise, let us go from here. And so we understand that the prince of this world is after us. The prince of this world is Satan, and he nips at our heels constantly. But you must remember, and if you ever want to utter gossip or slander or blasphemy or whatever, instead say this, I am baptized. Thanks be to God. And walk away. Because that's the reality. That's the peace that Christ leaves. That's the peace that Christ gives. That peace that's in baptism that connects you to the cross of Christ. If we are concerned about every jot and tittle and word that is spoken, then we miss the entire Scriptures. And so let only the words of Christ be upon our lips. Let the peace be left that Christ left. Let the peace 
be given unto you. And realize that the Holy Spirit, the Helper, the Comforter, the one who came to you in baptism, is your Recreator. The one who connects you to the cross and the forgiveness of sins. And so yes, turn from your ways. Hear my words. Speak to those who have not come today. You may tell them of my words. I have nothing to hide for the Lord has spoken. But hear this. Let peace reign among you. Let peace be with you. For Christ did not die for you to reestablish battle. Christ died so that the prince of this world's head would be crushed. So what now? What now for Augustana? Trust the same thing. Trust in the Lord. Trust in His baptism and in His word and sacraments, in His body and His blood. Look at the cross and see the consequence of your sin, but also the forgiveness of it. Remember that the peace of God is with you. And remember that there is never, ever a sin that Christ cannot and will not forgive as long as you repent. None. And that's hard for me to, to, to wrap my head around. Peace be with you. Christ's peace. I leave with you here at the end of the sermon. Let peace live amongst you and in your hearts. So what are we to do? Augustana. Rise. Let's go from here. Amen.